In this vlog, we get to find out what swims in this very special lake. So we've brought our top five anglers plus spooner to help us find out. But it's not us that's going to be doing the fishing. Eight lucky guests get to do all of the fishing and they get us as gillies for the whole weekend. Between us, hopefully, we can discover the lake's biggest resident. But before we get started, who are the lucky guests and where are we fishing? The eight winners are made up from a mixture of three of the highest bidders and then five lucky winners from the U-Wing competition. I run U-Wing competitions for Ace in Sheffield. The charity side of things is brilliant for us. We've done a lot of charity. We've done some with Spooner before and Dovey. We've only done 450 to 500,000 pounds of in prizes and we've actually done probably 116 charity now as well. Well, literally, we've always got a charity competition on as well. I've just come to make sure all of the winners arrive. I think they've been slept for a couple of days. They are all so excited. I've spoke to them all on the phone and they get the chance to fish this very special lake on the Baston Complex. It's flown completely under the radar up till now. This lake was drained down two years ago. All the snags were taken out. We took 300 fish out and put only 120 special ones back in. They've been fed for two years and not fished for. It's uh, amazing. I've only been fishing for three months, starting in sort of back end of May. So I started watching Monster Carp when that first came out. Um, I've always watched it every season and then sort of the last season I thought, I'm gonna go fishing next year. And I did. I <laughs> just got started, just got into it. So to come and actually learn from the guys whose videos I've watched to learn how to fish is just invaluable, really. Very, very excited. I did not sleep last night. One little bit. Literally awake all night. <laughs> I've already had the grief from my friends about the fact that I might be the one that blanks out of everyone that comes. So as long as I get a couple of fish on the bank and get to spend some time picking the brains of these professionals, then that'd be ideal for me. The fish, I believe, start at £20. So as long as I catch one, it's a new PB for me. Um, and then just to take as much as I can away from um, from the lads and that's basically all I'm hoping for this weekend. Doesn't get much better than this, I don't think. A team of fishermen, bait, lake full of fish, ready to go mate, I'm buzzing. Now with Ricky in the swim, we are going to keep things very, very simple. We're in the fortunate position that the two spots that we're fishing are both exactly the same distance out. So we're going to fish one down this reed line and one out towards open water and we're keeping bait exactly the same. Double simple because it's what the fish are used to. So first of all, you'll see in the mix, there's plenty of what we call the house pellet. And then we've just added in some cell boilies, 15 mil. I've crushed some up. I've done some chops as well because annoyingly I forgot my cutter and my crusher, bit of a schoolboy error, and then laced the whole lot in some of the cell smart liquid. That stuff creates a cloud up and down the water column, carries little particles of baits with it. So no matter what height those carp are cruising through at, they're going to get a scent of it and hopefully drop down onto two very well positioned rigs. Over to you, Ricky. Get it out there. Right then, a little look at the rig that we're starting with round here. Some of the competition winners have gone out with their own presentations, the ones that are confident um, and more experienced. However, Emily is just starting out. She's only been fishing a few times. And because of that, obviously I've put her on what I feel most confident in, which is the Combi Multi Rig, a barbless size six wide gape and a little rubber kicker. And the hook bait is a little 15 mil essential cell wafter. If she can't catch on this, I don't know what I'll do next. And while Daryl's over there talking all things riggy, we decided to get fishing straight away. And that is a result. A lovely, lovely fully scaled in the net. Just getting the rig back out, a few more spots of bait, and then we'll show you. Now we're hoping for plenty more of these, but it's always nice to get off the mark early and that's exactly what Rick's done. A mega fully, just under 18 pound on one of his confidence rigs, if you like, a noodle rig with a little Mark 1 bottom bait tipped with a little bit of fake corn and that is a cracking result. It's going well so far. Spooner's lad's caught one already, beautiful 18 pounder. Um, we've got our rods out, haven't caught yet, but we're sitting back and relaxing. 
Um, I can imagine exactly what Fairbrass is like around there, thinking it's some sort of carp academy, got everyone out on the grass in a big circle, teaching them rigs, telling them how sharp his hooks are, getting them to hit the clip 20 times. We haven't got that round here. We're nice and chilled, we're just about to have a beer. The chilled atmosphere didn't really help the carp though, and after that quick first bite, our end of the lake went very quiet. The same can't be said for Team Carp Academy. Just keep it moving. There ain't many guarantees in life, but Danny helping you to catch a carp is definitely one of them. Ah! Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, it's come off. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I want to say a naughty word, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Dan B and Dan, though, very quickly reset the rod and it wasn't long before he had a chance to redeem himself. Oh, okay. <laughs> <All right>. 64. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is 2410. Wow. Excellent. Good, Good work, no, sir. For the first fish, is it? Yes. Look at that. Expertly held, sir. Look at that. Our first one out of swim two. After that lost fish, we have redeemed ourselves very quickly. 24 pounds, 10 ounces. That's happy with that, mate? More than happy, mate. It's a puck of carp, that, that is. Gorgeous, isn't it? Really, really, really nice. And I reckon the challenge is going to be for everybody to land a fish. So Dan has set a hell of a challenge for everybody to catch. And he started pretty well. There's been a few fish out, a few fish lost. Let's see what happens tonight. See you in the morning. <laughs> it ended up being a particularly busy night up Stokes's end of the lake with multiple fish coming to his, Dan's and Daryl's anglers. One of the pools managed a mega common just on dark and Stokes's lad had a mega linear not long into darkness. Then when first light broke there were a few slings in the edge. I'm nearly in the lake here, like I'm literally <laughs> sliding. <laughs> well, it's been a very busy night round here in swim four and five. We've got a lovely 23 pound common here, a zip linear in the landing net, and nearly half of the competition winners have caught fish so far. And there we have it, Paul's first one of the session. A really, really nicely scaled 18 pounder. Really good for him to get off the mark. And the other pool in the swim next door has caught two as well overnight. So it's been a busy old night in this part of the lake. Let's go and have a look at the other ones. Look at that, another lake record for Paul, 27 pounds, two ounces. What a carp that is. That's one of two fish last night and obviously Paul next door is caught as well. They're both catching on the same rig. So when we've done some pictures of this one and got him back, we're gonna show you the all important technology. Now Dan is very busy on this special event. He's currently walking around the lake with his oncologist. So whilst I've got a bit of a lull in the action, I'm gonna tell you what I think Mr. Fairbrass has been using or his, his anglers have been using to catch their fish. I'm gonna say that it's a spinner rig, probably with a long shank X. It'll be about five inches of boom. There'll be a D-rig kicker on it. 
a bottom bait mounted that will definitely be touching the deck as opposed to wafting above it, an anti-tangle sleeve to a lead clip, AKA the Norton Nailer. That's what he'll be on. Wrong again, Spoons. It was actually a wide gape X, not a long shank, mainly because those beak points hold on better in the weed. Whilst it's lovely to see how these stockies have grown, the main reason I've put this event on is to support Melanoma Focus, a very worthy charity that I have a great connection with. Teaming up with you in competitions has allowed you, the public, to generate a huge amount of money for the charity. And to top it all, my oncologist, Mark Harries, who is chairman of the charity, has made the long journey from London to thank the winners personally and get a first glimpse of this crazy pursuit we call carp angling. So my connection with Danny is that I'm Danny's oncologist. Danny has spoken quite publicly about the fact that he was diagnosed with a form of skin cancer called melanoma. And when melanoma is very early, it's just simply cut out and that's usually the end of the story and most patients are cured. But for a few people like Danny, the disease can spread and they require drug treatment and then they need to come and see an oncologist, which is what I am. And so through that, I've got to know him. And then I, as one of our sort of standard medical questions, I said to Danny, you know, as when you're sort of meeting someone for the first time, what do you do? He said, oh, I'm a fisherman. I imagined him in some sort of North Sea uh, trawler kind of fisherman or something like that. So then I got a little insight from what Danny was telling me about his world and the world of fishing and carp fishing in particular. So that's how I've got to know him. It's so much more to this than I ever thought possible. One thinks of fishermen, don't you, as the sort of the old man with the sort of floppy hat sitting by a bank on the river with his sort of bamboo rod. And then to come here and to see all of the enthusiasts doing this sport, actually the beauty of this lake has also struck me. You know, you, this has been created out of nothing, out of a gravel pit. Um, and then the technical element of what's going on and how hard it is. I, you know, one assumes you just throw the rod in and the fish bite, but to see the complexity, the skill, the experience going on, yeah, I'm quite astounded actually. And then I'm very involved with a charity called Melanoma Focus. It's been one of the most valuable things I've ever done in my career. And Danny's been amazing at sort of supporting our charity. We support patients who have a diagnosis of melanoma, we support their families, and we also do research against this disease to try and find better treatments and prevention against melanoma, and we do a lot of education for people involved in the field. Um, it's taken me completely out of my normal clinical world day to day, um, looking at the bigger picture of how do you make a difference for people who've got this disease, how do we think about preventing it, what's the public health message around sun cream, early detection. And I work with a very small group of people who are employed by the charity who do amazing work sort of keeping it going. So it's been a great, great experience for me. The position of Danny's melanoma on his arm where it first arose almost certainly arose. It was caused by some form of sun exposure that he received probably many years before the actual tumour arose on his arm. And what we think the cause of melanoma is excessive sun exposure, particularly when people are quite young. If they get too much sun exposure, particularly sunburn, we think that predisposes them to getting skin cancer and particularly this nasty form of skin cancer in later years. And angling is often a sport associated with sort of young men and women. They'll be out in the environment and they'll be getting exposed to a lot of UV because that's what you do as an angler, isn't it? You're sitting by a pond or a, um, a lake getting sun exposure. So for anglers, the simplest thing that they can do to prevent the risk or reduce, I should say, the risk of skin cancer in later years is to cover up or if they can't cover up, use high factor sun cream to prevent sunburn. So they should still absolutely enjoy their sport and their passion of being outside. There's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't do that, but it's just a little bit of care for your skin, making sure you don't get sunburnt using those measures will make all the difference for their future. You've raised nearly £50,000 for Melanoma Focus, which is an incredible amount of money. We're a small charity, we do a lot. We run a helpline to support patients, we run research projects, we do educational events, but we're a small charity. We rely on donations, we rely on fundraising from people. And so this is a sort of game-changing amount of money for a small charity like us, so we're enormously grateful.
and we're extremely grateful for the work you and Melanoma Focus do for families up and down the country. Now back to the fishing. Let's get a little update from Daryl. And nothing's happened since this morning. Don't speak too soon, Pecky. Wow. <laughs> I'm like a f***ing dog. Right, it's been a very quiet day. We changed spots, rebaited on the new area, and it's been sat out there for the whole day. We're literally just about to wind in to go for dinner, having a big social in our swim, and suddenly the rod has absolutely bust off, and it's gone on a massive run kited all the way around to the left and uh, everyone is now standing here they're like no pressure no pressure no pressure for Emily I think I should go out there right so don't pull too hard yet Whilst Pecky expertly took to the boat to help free Emily's fish, Dovey decided to give us an impression of my boating skills from the last series of Monster Carp. Right, it's kiting, it's kiting left, isn't it? Shall I walk what I would it? do, no, walk round, walk round the back this way. Walk round the back this way, that's it. Show. Stop. Right. Well, that fish is called M's, isn't it? That's called M's, million percent. Get that, get that, get that barb duck out as quick as you can, Neil. Love the old rig. Maggot. The tiger nuts fell off, is it? Right, what was your personal best? 60. Not anymore. 24 pounds, exactly. How about that, eh? Yeah. <laughs> what a time for this to happen. An epic battle. And Emily has beaten her PB by eight pounds with this amazing 24 pounder. How about that, eh? With a little help from Del Pitt. <laughs> Well done, well done Pecky, well done Pecky. Well done, Pecky. Hey. Well that could not have happened at a more perfect moment, could it? You couldn't, you couldn't write it. Yeah, Emily's fish today was just off the scale. You, you could not write that in advance for it to be such an epic battle. All of us be there when she really didn't want anybody to be around when she got a bite and have an epic battle like that, Daryl out in the boat and her eventually land it was, was absolutely magic off, off the scale. If you'd said to me at the start of today, no one else is gonna get a bite, but Emily's gonna catch that one, I would have taken it hands down. And yeah, I just, just wanna say thank you to everybody that's bought a ticket, that's bid. You know, you've raised a hell of a lot of money for a really good cause. I really appreciate it. I'm sure Mark really appreciates it. I'm sure patients that are gonna get helped out by it really appreciate it. And it's a great thing to be able to do, you know, as an angler, to be able to put something back into uh, something that's really helped me and to see everybody here having such a good time. They've loved it so much, all of them, you know, to a man and woman, whether they caught a fish or not, um, have absolutely buzzed off of this. So, um, yeah, so today Emily catching that fish has been the icing on the cake. Well, fantastic.
Well, I, I, it's been absolutely brilliant from start to finish. I've loved every minute of it, like I say. Just the, the whole experience and the knowledge I've learned, you know. I've been fishing, like I say, about 20, 30 odd years, but to come here and get into the mindset of Danny and stuff like that, it's been, I, I can't, I, I'm lost for words, to be quite honest, it's been great. Um, Spoons has been terrific. Dovey's in the next swim, he's been round. We've had a good social. All the, bo all the boys are good, mate. The sound is, uh, we've had a great weekend. I feel so privileged to be here. Uh, the team, I'm bivvied up with, uh, with uh, Tom Dove and this has just been amazing. Been learning so many things, raising money for such a good cause that affects a load of people. Uh, Danny personally been affected by it and absolutely chuffed to, to get Dovey in the draw. Um, I think anyone is in a position to be able to contribute is uh, it's a good thing to do because it, it affects everybody, whether it's indirectly or directly everyone's come across it so I think anything you can do to help is a plus. You know it's a great cause obviously it's a, something that's very close to Dan's heart and um, it's just nice to help the anglers out I, you know they've, I'd like to think they've all had a brilliant weekend and been able to take something away from this um, which will hopefully help them catch a few more carp in the future. I went to fish at Unfish Lake, chat with all the cooler guys just fantastic, and the whole thing has been fantastic. Done it for a good charity. Um, I think it's well, well rewarded. Well, I think, like I say, for myself personally, my, my nan had skin cancer and unfortunately passed away because of cancer. I think everyone knows somebody who's been affected by cancer, and to do this and be passionate for fishing and also knowing it's going to a good cause, you know, it's been great. I've just been asked what it's been like to appear on the Corder vlog. Firstly, I thought it was Spooner's vlog, so I don't know what's going on here. Um, Spooner's vlog is still the greatest, but the Corder vlog is a very, very close second, and it's been very enjoyable to appear on my first one. But that's not what this weekend's been about. It's been about raising lots and lots of money for Melanoma Focus, which I'm proud to be part of that, and I am so chuffed at what we've achieved and managed to raise. And secondly, it's about watching other people enjoy it and getting the bites themselves. And I, I was lucky enough to draw, or for Ricky to draw in this swim, if you like, because he's been superb company. He's already a very, very accomplished angler, so I've not had to do too much. It's just been a great time to sit back, watch him have a couple of bites, a few beers, lovely food, great social. What more can you ask for? Oh, look at that power. It's all from holding carp, that. Yeah, man, what a way to finish. With three minutes to go before he's gonna wind in, Paul has had this lovely 18 pound, 12 ounce mirror with a little help from Mr. Spooner, who, who, got wet, who got wet at a moment's notice. I'm getting involved at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like 50% is mine. <laughs> yeah, it's been an absolutely brilliant event. Thank you so much to everybody that bought a ticket or, or bid for a, for a place on this weekend. We have raised just under 50 grand just this weekend. So thank you very much to everybody. We've all had a brilliant time. There's been loads of great fish caught, PB smashed. Can't wait to do the next one.